Earth-space weather this week gets incredibly busy. As we take a look at our Earth-facing disk, you can see a lot of regions in the north and in the south, but take a look at the regions particularly in the north because we have a lot of things going on. In fact, back on the 24th, you can see region 3229 firing off an M3.7 class flare. This solar flare actually also launched a solar radiation storm and an Earth-directed solar storm. In fact, the halo that we saw in coronagraphs was partially Earth-directed, which meant it was kind of going off to the west. But then another day passes, and late on the 25th, wham, right there, the region once again fires yet another flare. This time was a, a, an M6.2 th or a 3 flare, if I recall. And it was an R2 radio blackout. And this is a, a reasonably large enough blackout that we have to worry about aviation. We do have to worry about those IKO uh, advisories. And on top of that, we had yet another solar storm that was launched along with another radiation storm. This time the chronographs show a full halo, so this one is definitely Earth-directed. In fact, it should be close to a direct hit. So we've got a one-two punch when it comes to solar storms. We've got stepped-up radiation storms that are occurring right now, and that are ongoing and will continue to go uh, and, and stay elevated until these uh, solar storms reach Earth before things begin to calm down. Meanwhile, we still have a lot of active regions on the Earth-facing disk that are big flare players, and we have a coronal hole that is rotating in through the Earth strike zone and is giving us some fast solar wind to boot. So my goodness, everywhere you look, there's something going on, and that means we're going to have Earth effects both in the day side, the night side, and at the poles. For more details on this week's space weather, including how these solar storms and these big flares might affect you, Come check out my channel or see me at spaceweatherwoman.com.